At first glance, you'd be forgiven for thinking Japan just bought the American F-16 and called it a day. But the truth is far more fascinating. This is the Mitsubishi F-2. And it's not a copy. It's the answer to a problem that only Japan had. So why would a close ally of the United States spend billions of dollars and decades of effort to build its own version of one of America's most successful fighter jets instead of just buying more off the shelf? The answer is a story of national ambition, a unique and terrifying military threat, and a technological breakthrough that, in one crucial way, briefly made Japan the world leader. This is why Japan built its own F-16. Our story begins in the 1980s. The Cold War was raging and Japan was firmly in the Western camp. Its main fighter jet was the formidable F-15J, a license-built version of the American F-15 Eagle. It was, and still is, a brilliant air superiority fighter, designed to win dogfights and dominate the skies. But it had a critical gap. Japan is an island nation, a long, sprawling archipelago. Its greatest military threat wasn't enemy fighters flying over a land border. It was a massive fleet of ships and bombers coming from across the sea. They needed what they called a support fighter, a jet that could fly long distances over water, carry powerful anti-ship missiles, and strike targets on the sea and ground. The F-15 wasn't built for that. So Japan faced a choice, buy something else or build their own. Flush with confidence from locally assembling their own F-15 and developing their previous fighter, the F-1, Japan's aerospace industry believed they were ready. They drafted plans for not one, but two completely original fighter designs. One from Mitsubishi was a sleek delta wing with canards. Another from Kawasaki looked strikingly similar to an F-18 Hornet. But reality quickly set in. Starting from scratch was astronomically expensive. It was also incredibly risky for a country whose fighter jet experience was limited. They needed a partner. The United States was watching closely and saw a strategic opportunity. Instead of just selling Japan a finished product, they proposed a joint development project. The foundation would be a cutting-edge variant of the F-16 that the U.S. Air Force itself had passed on the Agile Falcon. This design featured a larger wing and other improvements, making it a perfect starting point for Japan's long-range requirements. It seemed like a perfect partnership. In 1987, the deal was announced. But then, a geopolitical earthquake nearly sank the entire project. It was called the Toshiba Kongsberg Scandal. A Japanese company, Toshiba, and a Norwegian company illegally sold advanced propeller milling machinery to the Soviet Union. This technology allowed the Soviets to make their submarines incredibly quiet, fundamentally undermining NATO's naval advantage. The backlash in Washington was furious. Trust in Japan's ability to guard sensitive technology evaporated. The US Congress was now vehemently opposed to transferring any more advanced technology. The F-2 program was on the brink of collapse, but the project found an unlikely savior in geopolitics. The US still wanted a strong, well-armed Japan to serve as a bulwark against the Soviet Pacific Fleet. So, the Bush administration forced a new, brutally one-sided agreement. Japan would be allowed to co-develop the jet, but they had to agree to hand over all the new technology they developed for the F-2, while their access to equivalent American technology would be severely restricted. Japan, with its back against the wall, swallowed its pride and signed. The F-2 could proceed, but it was born from a partnership of profound mistrust. This context is crucial to understanding the jet that would eventually emerge. So, with the groundwork laid, what did Japan actually change? If you put an F-16 and an F-2 side by side, the differences seem subtle, but they are profound. Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, a company with a legendary aviation history from the Zero Fighter of World War II, led the charge. They didn't just tweak the F-16, they reinvented it for a single specific purpose. First, the wing. The F-2's wing is 25% larger than the F-16's. This wasn't just for show. A bigger wing means more lift, more fuel capacity, and most importantly, more hardpoints to carry weapons. The F-2 gained two additional hardpoints, allowing it to carry four massive, domestically built ASM anti-ship missiles. This larger wing also increased its combat range by roughly 25%, a non-negotiable requirement for patrolling Japan's vast exclusive economic zone. To handle the stresses of this larger airframe, especially during low-level flight over rough seas, the fuselage was strengthened. The tail fins were made larger for better stability. The canopy was changed from a two-piece to a three-piece design for better bird strike resistance. And to save weight and reduce its radar signature, Japan made extensive use of advanced composite materials, even developing their own secret radar absorbent material for the nose and wing edges. Under the hood, the cockpit was a generational leap. 
They replaced the F-16's classic dials and gauges with large color LCD screens, a modern glass cockpit that gave the pilot far superior situational awareness. All of these changes were significant, but they pale in comparison to the F-2's crown jewel. The nose of the F-2 is slightly longer and wider than the F-16's for one reason, to house the J-APG-1 radar. And this piece of technology is why the F-2 is a legend in aviation circles. The J-APG-1 was the world's first active electronically scanned array, or AESA, radar to enter production on a fighter jet. Let's break down why that's a big deal. Older radars, called mechanically scanned radars, have a single antenna that physically moves back and forth to scan the sky. It's like using a flashlight and waving it around in the dark. An AESA radar, by contrast, is made of thousands of tiny transmit-receive modules. It can scan different directions almost instantaneously, without moving apart. It's like having a thousand flashlights that can each point somewhere different, all at the same time. This makes it incredibly difficult to jam gives it phenomenal range and resolution, and allows the pilot to track multiple targets while still scanning the sky. Today, ASA radars are standard on all fifth-generation fighters like the F-35 and are the single most important radar technology. And the Japanese F-2 had it first, even before the American F-22 Raptor. In total, a staggering 95% of the F-16's design drawings were changed for the F-2. This was not a copy. It was a new aircraft, a specialist born for a specific, demanding role, so, was it a success? The answer is complicated. On one hand, the F-2 became exactly what Japan needed, a formidable long-range guardian. It has routinely been scrambled to intercept Russian bombers and reconnaissance aircraft that probe Japanese airspace. Its powerful AESA radar and advanced Japanese AAM missiles make it a deadly opponent, even for more modern fighters. However, its specialized nature is also its biggest limitation. It was optimized for anti-ship and air defense roles around Japan. It lacks the all-around, multi-role versatility of later F-16 variants, which can employ a wider array of American and NATO weapons. Furthermore, the program was haunted by its rocky start and soaring costs. Plans to build over 140 aircraft were slashed. Only 94 were ever built. Then, in 2011, disaster struck. The Great Tohoku Earthquake and Tsunami devastated a Japanese airbase damaging or destroying 18 F-2s, a massive blow to the small fleet. So why did Japan build its own F-16? They built it because no other jet in the world perfectly fit their unique geographical and strategic needs. They built it to foster and prove their own aerospace industry. And they built it because, in a moment of technological genius, they saw an opportunity to leapfrog everyone else with their AESA radar. The Mitsubishi F-2 is more than just a jet. It's a statement. A statement that Japan could take the world's best foundation and refine it into something uniquely its own. It is the story of a samurai, forging a sharper, longer sword to protect his island home. If you enjoyed this deep dive into aviation history and want to join us for more, then make sure to subscribe to the channel. We explore the fascinating stories behind the world's most incredible machines. Liking the video and leaving a comment with your thoughts on the F-2 or which aircraft we should cover next really helps our channel grow and lets us know what you want to see. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.